In this video, I'll show you how to get started using keyframes. One of the most powerful features in ProShow Producer is the ability to make motion using keyframes. So what exactly is a keyframe? When making any kind of motion effect, a keyframe is simply a point on a timeline where something happens. For example, in this slide we have a very basic effect. When I press play, the image zooms in. Here, our timeline is the total length of our slide and transition times. And during this timeline, we have two things that happen. The first thing that happens is the image appears on screen at this size. The second thing that happens is the image changes to this size when the slide ends. So for this slide, we have two keyframes. With Producer, we can add more keyframes and control their timing to make effects like this. Here we have an image that flies into the center of the screen, freezes in place for a moment, and then flies off the screen. Let's take a closer look at how this effect is put together. In Slide Options, we'll go to the Effects tab. Now let's use the keyframe timeline just below the preview to see how keyframes are used in this slide. Here in the keyframe timeline, you'll see there are four icons, each numbered in order 1 through 4. That means there are four keyframes for this layer. Just below the keyframe timeline, I can click and hold the mouse button and scrub through the timeline to preview the slide. In this example, you can see that my slide begins as a blank screen. Once I scrub past keyframe 1, you'll see the layer appear on the left side of the screen. As I scrub through and reach keyframe 2, you'll notice the image layer moves, zooms in, and rotates until it's exactly where I want it in the middle of the screen. As I continue to scrub through the preview, you'll notice the layer stays in place until I reach keyframe 3. At that point, the layer begins to move, zoom, and rotate again off to the right of the screen as the slide ends. Now let's start with a brand new slide and see how easy it is to make this type of effect. First I'll add a layer to a slide, then double click to open slide options. Next I'll click the effects tab at the top of the window. Now before adding any motion, let's look at the keyframe timeline. This is where you'll add, remove, and control the timing of your keyframes. Notice that we already have some keyframes here. This is completely normal. In fact, every layer in every slide will always have at least two keyframes. Keyframe 1 will always be the starting point. Any settings we apply here will determine how the layer will look and when the layer will first appear as the slide plays. The highest numbered keyframe will be the ending point for the layer. For now, that's keyframe 2. Any settings we apply here will determine how the layer will look and when the layer is no longer visible as the slide plays. Now, something else we see in the keyframe timeline is the total length of the slide. In this case, we have 3 seconds of transition in time, 3 seconds for the slide duration, and 3 seconds for the transition out. And this is where keyframes become so powerful. Instead of only having one starting point and one ending point for the entire duration of a slide, using keyframes, we can control exactly where these points exist as the slide plays. Plus, we can add additional points to the timeline, which allows us to create more interesting effects. Now let's go ahead and make the effect we saw earlier. For the first part of our effect, we want the layer to zoom in, rotate, and fly in from off the screen. So the first thing that happens in our timeline is we need to tell Producer what the image will look like and where it will be when the slide starts. So click on keyframe 1, then in the motion and audio area, let's reduce the zoom and add a bit of rotation. Now in the preview window, I'll click and drag the layer off the screen to the left. To get a better idea of where the layer is while outside of the frame, at the bottom of the slide options window, I can use the zoom slider to adjust the canvas view. 
Then click and drag the layer into position. For more precise positioning, you can also adjust the pan values manually here. With these adjustments, so far we're telling producer that when this slide starts, our image will be this size over here, just out of frame. Now let's move on to keyframe 2. To activate the keyframe, we can either select the keyframe icon in the timeline, or click the small preview on the right and move to the next keyframe. This will be our next something that happens in our timeline. Here we'll do a few zoom and rotation adjustments and make the layer appear exactly how we want it to look once it flies into the frame. Now at this point, we've made the image fly in and land in the middle of the screen. However, if we preview the slide, we'll see the layer does not hold in place like we saw in the example. That's because keyframe 2 is all the way at the end of the keyframe timeline. What that means is that this image layer will take all of this time to reach keyframe 2. To have the layer arrive at the center of the screen faster, we need to move keyframe 2 closer to keyframe 1. To do that, simply click and drag it over to the left. Now when we preview the slide again, this time the layer will move to the center of the screen more quickly. However, notice that when we get to keyframe 2, the image suddenly disappears. Now don't worry, this is completely normal. The reason the image disappears is because keyframe 2 is positioned here. However, we still have all of this time left in our slide. To keep the image visible and to freeze it in place, we'll need to add more keyframes. To do that, just to the right of keyframe 2, right-click on the keyframe timeline and select Insert. This will create keyframe 3. And now we have our next Something Happens. This time, the something we want to happen is nothing. We want producer to keep the same settings between these two points and not make any changes. So, to make sure keyframe 2 and keyframe 3 have the same settings, let's right-click on keyframe 2 and select Copy to Next Keyframe. Now let's also click and drag keyframe 3 over to the right a little. The farther apart keyframes 2 and 3 are, the longer the layer will freeze in place as the slide plays, which we can see as we scrub through the timeline. For more precise timing, we can also right-click on the keyframe icon and choose Set Time for this keyframe. As we scrub through the timeline again, we can see that we need one more thing to happen to complete the effect, which means we need one more keyframe. So, just to the right of keyframe 3, right-click on the keyframe timeline and insert another keyframe. This time, we'll make the flyout effect by increasing the zoom, adding some more rotation, and dragging the layer off to the right of the screen. Finally, to make sure the effect takes up the remaining time in our slide, let's click and drag keyframe 4 all the way to the right. Now let's preview the effect. Remember, a keyframe is simply a point when something will happen within a slide. And with each keyframe you add, you'll have custom control over your content, allowing you to expand your creative options when making shows. Thanks for watching. Be sure to visit our blog, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for even more helpful tips.